the most in their color, in other words, claims the most turf, wins. Now, that's not all inking is for. Ink walls to swim up. Or get sneaky and hide in ink to splat opponents. The more ink you spread, the bigger the advantage you'll have in battles. Whoops. If you're out of ink, submerge in it to refill. New techniques like the squid surge to swim up walls in a single burst and the squid roll to jump out of ink while simultaneously turning around have also been spotted. Oh, while it's glowing like this, the move also slightly repels ink from opponents. We've discovered where these turf war battles will take place. Stages confirmed for the Splatlands include... Scorch Gorge! Eel Tail Alley, Mincemeat Metalworks, and Undertow Spillway. There seem to be other stages as well. Hagglefish Market, a pier filled to the bream with street vendors. The stuff here looks fishy, though. Several stages from Greater Inkopolis also return. Museum Delfonsino. Battles here take place in the central courtyard of this modern museum. <clears throat> take special note of the rotating wall. Hammerhead Bridge. This bridge connects Greater Inkopolis to the Splatlands. After lots of construction work, it's finally open. Thanks to the bridge, transit to and from Greater Inkopolis is much easier. Mahi Mahi Resort. A luxury resort in Greater Inkopolis. Pay close attention to the platforms that sink as the battle goes on. There will be more areas to ink afterward, so don't forget to splat them. Including the stages you see here, a total of 12 await. More stages will be added in free post-launch updates. Now, let's get into the inky essence of battles weapons. First, it appears that all the basic weapons from previous games will be available. On top of that, Splatland-specific weapon types, such as the bow-like stringers, will make their destructive debut. We've also verified a new weapon type called Splatanas. This is the Splatana Wiper. Send blades of ink flying with the centrifugal force generated by swinging. Swing after charging up a bit, and it'll transform into a charged slash. As expected, it's powerful as a long-range attack. But the charged slash at close range is also quite devastating. Let's dive into the weapons that can help you claim even more turf. Special weapons. As the name implies, these are special kinds of weapons that can be unleashed after filling up the gauge from inking turf. There are some new types we've identified, so let's take a closer look. This is the Tactic Cooler. When it's activated, a fridge appears. You'll find in-game beverages stored inside. These have a variety of effects, like momentarily increasing speed. They come in packs of four, so take one and share the rest with your teammates. This is the Wave Breaker. When activated, it'll unleash waves around the area. It'll also mark an opponent's location and cause damage. Try to avoid them with a well-timed jump. Finally, the Reef Slider build up power, then charge into opponents who need a good splat. Once the attack ends, it'll explode and damage the surrounding area. Familiar special weapons like the Tenta Missiles, Ink Jet, Ink Storm, Ultra Stamp, and Booyah Bomb will also make their grand return. 
special weapons are paired with main weapons. So find the combo that suits your splatting style. Shop here to get your tentacles on some fresh weapons. This is Ammo Knights, owned Sheldon's by the horseshoe crab, Sheldon. To... The locals have praised him for his wealth of weapon wisdom and sophisticated selection. Instead of using in-game currency for purchases, you'll need these Sheldon licenses. Obtain them by leveling up through battles, and by consistently using the same weapons. One Sheldon license can be exchanged for one weapon that corresponds to your level. Oh, and just between us? If you exchange more Sheldon licenses than normal, it appears he'll give you a weapon you like sooner than expected as a special reward. By the way, the Inklings and Octolings walking around town are pretty savvy about their fashion. Things like headgear, clothing, and shoes are just as important as weapons to staying fresh in Splatsville. Gear can be obtained in the shops around here. Each one is managed by an interesting shopkeeper, so let's drop in. This oh, is not Couture, a headgear shop. You'll find an array of hats, masks, and glasses, so you can get ahead of the game. The laid-back Nautilus, Gnarly Eddie, and the energetic Nails, the snail sitting here, run the shop. This is the clothes boutique, Mana Wardrobe. It specializes in tops, like t-shirts and jackets. The shopkeeper, Jell Lafleur, might be a touch archaic with words, but this jellyfish has a keen eye for fashion sense. And finally, the shoe store crush station. Oh Get a my. variety of cool kicks here, from sneakers to sandals and even leather footwear. It's owned by Mr. Coco. He might look intimidating, but deep down, he's a nice guy, probably. You're more than welcome to pick out gear based on its appearance, but they do come with abilities that can help you out in battle. Take run speed up, for example. It can increase your running speed. Or intensify action. This improves the squid roll and squid surge moves. There must be there a are drawback. Even more abilities to discover. Plus, there's a fellow in Splatsville who can swap one ability with another. Talk to Merch here, and you can add an ability okay. of your choosing to your favorite gear. I, I want to know who the idols are now. And if you save your favorite gear combinations as fresh as fits, you can change in a flash. Flavor up your fashion with whatever outfits you want. <laughs> Simply splat-tastic. <laughs> Welcome to the lobby, a gathering spot for those seeking fresh battles. Turf war battles aren't the only things that happen here. You can also square off in anarchy battles, where you compete for rankings. Hold the active zones in splat zones. Ride the tower to the goal in tower control. Carry the Rainmaker to its destination in Rainmaker. Or collect and throw clams to score in Clam Blitz. Duke it out in these four modes, which are on rotation. Want to take on a challenge solo? select Anarchy Battle Series. But if you want to team up with friends, joining Anarchy Battle Open is the way to go. You can also play private battles online. Set battle modes and other options to your liking. Why not play with your favorite battle modes alongside friends? Information about these game modes will be available soon on the game's official website.
Now, let's talk about the features within the lobby. This is the test range. Try out and get comfy with your weapons here. Besides being able to practice whenever you want, it's also a great place to get all warmed up while waiting for rivals to join a battle. Next up, ghosts. Online friends will appear as 3D holograms. Drop in on friends in the midst of battle and play alongside them. You can also join up and start a battle on the same team. You'll be able to see what your friends are up to. It appears that you can also call out to friends in the lobby and invite them for battles. Why not see these features for yourself? This is where you can view battle replays. It appears that it can somewhat recreate recent battles. Fast forward. Or skip to a certain part. Or even swap to another player's view. Incredible! Not only can you rewatch battles as many times as you'd like, but there's even a share feature. We hope you'll use this handy tool to help you rank up. Next, we'll analyze and discuss this space within the lobby, the locker room. Here, you'll find some fresh lockers. One is yours, and the others belong to players with whom you've recently played. As you can see, you'll be able to place any acquired weapons, gear, and items to your liking. Slap on some snazzy stickers and modify your locker's color. This is your space to express yourself, so customize it however you'd like to show off your signature splatting style. Oh, yes, items can be obtained at Hotlantis, a general store on the edge of Splatsville. Hey, Apparently, the store manager vanishes quite often, so instead, it's run by an artist named Harmony. Harmony. She used to be a regular customer here. It's got an outlandish assortment of items. Why not show the store some love by grabbing some goods? There appear to be plenty of other customization features as well. When battles start, these splash tags appear. Ooh, I like that. They can be customized with a banner, badge, and title. Additionally, you can change the emote your character performs when you win a battle. All of these can be obtained via the in-game catalog, which will be available at Hotlantis. By using points earned no! from battles, you can unlock various items, like stuff for splash tags and seasonal gear. Following the game's launch, a new catalog is planned to be released every three months for two years. Nice. Be sure to snatch up everything you see in each catalog. Phew. There's still a lot of info to share, but I need to take a little breather here. In the meantime, please turn your attention toward this. <laughs> Introducing Table Turf Battle! Lay out your cards for a dazzling deck duel! Ink different shapes with different cards! Charge up power, then unleash it all at once with a special attack! There are cards like this, and even ones like this, and there are over 150 cards to collect in-game! So build your deck and send your rivals packing! The Splatsville locals eagerly await your challenge. Table Turf Battle! Every player will be gifted an in-game starter deck! <clears throat> Excuse me, I lost my clamposure for a second there. That was Table Turf Battle, a 1v1 competitive card battle spin-off of Turf War. 
It appears you can play this at the Table Turf Battle Dojo in Splatsville. Be on the lookout for more details about Table Turf Battle in the future. And now, this! Hey, my favorite game mode. Run is a simple job that requires four players to work together to collect power eggs from the salmonids advancing on them. This part-time gig is rumored to be a little fishy, but it pays pretty well. By defeating particularly ferocious creatures called boss salmonids, you can obtain valuable golden eggs. You'll need to collect and deliver plenty of golden eggs in order to complete this job. This time around, we've confirmed some new types of boss salmonids. So let's share our findings. First up, the Slammin' Lake. Aw, it looks so cute. It creates barriers and protects salmonids on the ground. Get too close to it, and it'll attempt to crush you. So approach with caution. Next, the Big Shot. It fires heavy projectiles from a distance. Be prepared for powerful shock waves when they land. With new boss salmonids confirmed, make sure you're ready for an even more dangerous salmon run. of the new King Salmon. It's unbelievable! It looks like they'll occasionally appear just before you complete the job. The tank on your back is a specially provided egg cannon. And it appears that you can fire golden eggs to deal massive damage. However, these battles are under a time limit. So rack up as much damage as possible to drive them back. And this, this is the still being researched big run. We believe this is when salmonids invade the city in which Icklings and Octolings live. It appears that this event happens once every few months. So brace yourselves, big run is coming. Now observe this manhole in Splatsville Square. This is actually the entrance to the home of the Octarians, still alive. Sorry. the Inkling's longtime enemies. As Agent 3, the newest recruit of the new Squidbeak Splatoon, you'll do battle with the Octarian army, whose members are covered in hair for some reason. Along with your buddy Small Fry, you'll explore many stages, each one full of twists and turns. Oh, I almost forgot. Story mode is perfect for getting familiar with inking turf and using weapons. So newer players might want to try it out. Well, we've come this far. What awaits the Inklings and Octolings in the end? We hope you can witness the epic finale of this splatastic saga. We're back in Splatsville. From here on out, we'd like to talk about other features that'll help you enjoy your splatting escapades even more in the Splatoon 3 game. You can post illustrations here via this mailbox. They'll be displayed all across the city and even in stages. So put on your artist cap and post away. Vertical illustrations will also be supported. Additionally, you can grab food and drinks that'll help you in battles at the concession stand. Or use local communication to play with nearby folks in your favorite modes at the shoal. By using photo mode, you can snap selfies, send photos to a smart device, or display them in your locker. This is the Recon Guide. Select your favorite stages at any time and take a stroll around them. Why not get familiar with each stage prior to battles? This 
is SplatNet 3. You can use this with your smart device. It contains features like checking your latest battle stats and ordering special in-game gear not sold in shops from the SplatNet gear shop. But that's not all. Access features like Krusty Sean's Wonder Crust. Support this fellow's journey using ink points earned depending on the areas you inked during battles. Or view history to take a trip down memory lane with your past ranks. You can also snag special wallpapers and more for your smart device. So be sure to grab them. It appears that SplatNet 3 will be available at launch via the Nintendo Switch Online mobile app. Next up, Amiibo figures. Scan Splatoon series Amiibo at this spot in Splatsville, and voila! Saving your favorite gear combinations as fresh as fits will allow you to easily swap outfits. Emotes. Additionally, it seems you'll be able to get special gear and even snap photos together with Amiibo. And Splatoon 3 Amiibo incoming! Release is scheduled for this holiday. Now, let's talk about post-launch updates. As we mentioned a while ago, following the game's launch, a new in-game catalog will be released every three months for two years. New weapons will also be added around the same time as each catalog. In addition, X Battle, available after attaining an extremely high rank in Anarchy Battle, and League Battle, where every two hours you can compete in teams based on your Anarchy Battle results, are planned to be added in future updates. Furthermore, for this game, we're planning to add large-scale paid DLC. More details will come at a later time, so please be on the lookout. And now, I'd like to wrap up this research report from the Squid Research Lab. Thank you for watching. Huh? Who are you supposed to be? Yeah, it's finally, we're getting the new idols, I think. Oh, probably not. I'm not. Oh, Squid. I completely forgot to tell you about Deep Cut. They're an incredibly popular trio who oh. hosts the Splatsville news program, Anarchy Splatcast. They provide information on battle stages, as well as other news bulletins. While we're on the subject, the youngsters of Splatsville own sea cucumber phones. They can check the news while doing other activities, as shown here. And... Hey, we're getting Splatfish. Splatfish.
It's been confirmed that Splatfests will make a return. In these events, you pick a team based on the announced theme, then settle the outcome via battle. And this time around, there will be three teams to choose from. Splatfests consist of two halves. In the first half, teams will compete in 4v4 turf war battles. The second half is a tricolor turf war. It's a special mode where, whoa, three teams fight at the same time. <laughs> All players on the team currently in first place will start in the center of the stage. Two players each from the second and third place teams will attack the first place team from opposite ends of the stage. Can the leading team defend themselves? Or will the other two teams exact revenge and force them out? Use the Ultra Signal to control the battle and contribute to the Splatfest while working alongside the members of Deep Cut. Okay, we're going to close out this presentation with an announcement from Deep Cut. Take it away. That's all we have to share today, or not. And now, announcing the Splatoon 3 Enter the Splatlands Invitational 2022 Tournament. This event will take place on September 5th at PAX West. Some of the top finishers from this summer's Splatoon 2 Inkopolis Showdown will head to Seattle and compete in North America's first ever Splatoon 3 Invitational. Follow the official Nintendo vs. Twitter account for updates. And to see more of our research findings as we uncover them, follow the official Splatoon North American Twitter account. We hope you'll have an incredible time starting September 9th. Bye-bye! That's it? Is that it? Uh... uh. Did it? Okay. Where um, it does them. Uh yeah. A bit late. A bit late to the uh, the the thing, man. I'm a bit late. Sorry.
for a brick. Uh, I right. And uh, well then, let's say let's say uh, what's the picture? What's the picture? Well, the, not VR chat. I don't want you. I. I Start to play more VR chat. I'm still don't like them as what is this? Start that up. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, sorry for being all late to the thing. Uh, I am hoping my microphone picked up half of the voices I had in because I've been, I've done this to myself multiple times. I'm tired. I just cleaned the crap out of my room, if you haven't noticed, because I'm still cleaning. But I didn't know the direct was happening to today. But I'm I like the idols. We got I think that one's Chinese, and the other one is, uh, um, not really good with, uh, culture, uh, no. I don't know which one is that one, but the other one looks like Chinese. I'm probably wrong, I'm probably slandering, or hurting something, I'm sorry, but... I'm not good with this stuff. Uh, that's all I wanted to say. I will try to hook up my stuff for the... Yeah, I have a game... Uh, no, game for on the 12th. So I'm going to be streaming it. A Spider-Man. I got the remastered version on the uh, PC because it's there. You know? You know? Later.